medium-term budget policy statement to Parliament this morning, or this afternoon rather. The 2015 budget is aimed at rebalancing the fiscal policy to give greater impetus to investment, to support enterprise development, promote agriculture and industry, and to make our cities engines of growth. Now, for what the nation can expect this afternoon, we are joined from Parliament by our SABC's economics reporter, Francis Heard. Francis, a very good morning to you and welcome. Good morning to you, Elvis. What can we expect from the 2015 medium-term budget, do you think? Well, uh, well, let's first clarify a, a mini budget or the medium term budget policy statement uh, is basically a review that comes between our main budget speeches in February. So this isn't a time uh, where we actually allocate firm uh, funds for issues or increased taxes. However, it is used as a guide uh, towards where government is going. So it's projections of allocations for the next three years, say, uh, those could be refined in February. It gives us an idea of what government's thinking and also an idea about where the fiscus is, about how our state accounts are looking. And, and very tough for the finance minister uh, this year because it's even worse than it was in February. We were already saying, you know, that was a grim reality. He's now expected to uh, look at Treasury's expectations for growth this year. The World Bank is saying we'll only grow at 1.4%, which is just dismal. Uh, so he may give an estimate, uh, bringing down the previous estimate in February, uh, something closer to 1.4, 1.5. So really it is going to be a reality check, uh, but it's also a chance for him to, like you said, uh, encourage investment, not only overseas investment, uh, but we know that a lot of South African businesses are holding on to cash. So he'll want to maybe give the right noises uh, to help people who are disillusioned to believe in this economy, to believe leave in the future and very importantly he'll have to talk about debt uh, because the rating agencies are concerned that given our uh, reality um, we can talk about student protests for example many competing in uh, 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 competing interests but not much money uh, more money coming in so so it really those rating agencies want to ensure that our government isn't going to succumb to the temptation to take on more debt now, this presentation comes at a time when South Africa and the world economy is going through the worst, even China for that matter. Does the minister have room to manoeuvre and maybe pull a surprise on all of us? I don't think so. Some people are looking out for what he will say, uh, firstly, on education um, because of the, the uh, uh, protests that we've seen. I don't think uh, there will be any change in that allocation. I think government can't afford a precedent where there are protests and two days later suddenly a new allocation uh, for, for education. But he may mention it. He may say that government is looking at that. And we have so many uh, conflicts needs in this country. A few minutes ago uh, there were primary school children here. They don't have the same loud voice perhaps uh, but we know that that is crucial. Uh, the education of youngsters. Um, government wants to introduce the national health insurance. We may hear something on that. Uh, we didn't hear anything on nuclear uh, plans in February. Uh, we are, are expecting a huge nuclear build at some stage uh, but basically the Treasury is showing no signs of actually allocating any funds towards that. And Elvis, uh, maybe in terms of surprises, he could give us some indication of what government is thinking on taxes for next year. Not likely, however, because the, the Davis committee is still looking at some of the ideas, but he may suggest uh, that government may have to look at VAT, and that's quite a, a thorny topic because VAT is, is what we pay on goods in the stores and affects the poor uh, because they actually spend a larger part of their salaries in the stores yeah. um, and and some calling for a wealth tax but I don't think we'll hear any surprises today now a voice that's very loud right now is all the university students are the university fees also perhaps gonna come under the spotlight in face of the protest mm -hmm. all over the country well, we may see a protest that it sort of makes sense uh, if students want to highlight their issues to come to Parliament today. Uh, but like I said, I, I think that the 
the government cannot afford um, uh, sort of making a knee-jerk uh, reaction and suddenly allocating more to higher education. Already we have a 30 billion rand allocated um, some to, to the student fund and there's concerns about how that, that money is being managed. That already uh, the, the uh, Minister Bladen Zamande has said that they will look at the regime, there's going to be a task team, uh, we'll hear something in November. So I don't think we'll hear any reallocations but maybe uh, he will mention uh, that that this is ongoing uh, maybe he will mention and and I think people need to understand that when we are not saving when the economy is not growing and more taxes are not coming in we have a problem in that if we allocate more money to higher education for instance that money uh, has to be taken away from something else already so many South Africans reliant on so social grants. Uh, yeah. We have so many needs. We have people living in shacks without sanitation. So we have to realize that given the budget at the moment, it's either going to be a trade-off and if more money goes to higher education, somebody will be losing out or we'll have to take on more debt, which is dangerous because the rating agencies may then downgrade us. Then uh, debt becomes even more expensive. We could land up spending more and more of the money that comes in just on servicing those debt cost so so the minister has to be very careful so our strategic priorities need to be in place and maybe those rating agencies that you're talking about which some suggest are just standard and very poor as having their beady eyes on our economy but that's where we got to leave it francis thank you so much for that input that's our our reporter francis heard in cape town